Hey guys, Dr. Shook here. How's it been? How you been doing? Um, haven't talked to you guys in a while and I hope you guys have been checking out our podcast because um, we have about 150 podcasts now. And um, anyway, I wanted to just uh, hop on here a second because um, I've been, uh, I've seen over the past few days that a lot of the, my clients I've been working with have really high reverse T3 levels. And a lot of people, you know, doctors very rarely check reverse T3. And uh, it's a very important, it's a very important marker to evaluate. Uh, it is one that can, uh, can be elevated for a, a number of different reasons. But most commonly, most commonly what you're going to find is that reverse T3, well, let me, let me give you a little bit of information. Your body takes T4, which is your primary thyroid hormone, and makes it into T3, which is the hormone that your body, that your body uses to stimulate the cells, right? Every cell in your body requires T3 to produce energy. So your body also makes something called reverse T3. Reverse T3 is a form of T3 that's basically inactive and it can actually attach itself to the cells and block your T3 your T3 from stimulating the physiological activity. So not many people that I see are aware of or are having reverse T3 checked and evaluated. So you have all these people that, you know, I see this I see this all the time where TSH looks good, the doctors will check T4, the doctors will even check T3, and those look good and, you know, they're within the lab range anyway. They're probably not functionally ideal. And they look good and they say you're fine and the person still feels terrible. So, um, you know, I just, I've reviewed like three people today, like today alone, we, we were, I was looking at their... Um, three different people and their, their reverse T3 levels were were significantly elevate, elevated, like lab high. You want to talk about feeling terrible, just elevate someone's reverse T3. And so what, what causes it to elevate? Well, deficiencies in selenium, number one, uh, deficiencies in, in zinc will create some issues because you may not be able to make as much. You need selenium and zinc to produce T3, okay, T3. Your... Um, Another reason you'll produce higher levels of reverse T3 are um, infections, um, inflammatory processes do that, um, higher catecholamines like stresses, traumas, uh, what else? Different toxins, certain medications will cause higher reverse T3. But this is a huge one, guys. If, you, if, you, if you're struggling with your thyroid and if you have, you know, most people, unfortunately, they only have TSH, if that, as a marker. Um, if you can get reverse T3, and get total T3, you can do a little, um, you can compare them. You're, you should have roughly six times or more T3 than you do, to, and that's total T3, not free T3, but total T3 that you do to your uh, your reverse your reverse T3, okay? So anyway, that's something I want to share with you guys. I haven't hopped on here. I said, you know what? I'm getting ready to leave. Got my jacket on, and uh, I was getting everything packed up, and I thought that I would share with you guys um, this little tip because I think it's really important and you know what if you can at least become aware of the reverse T3 levels It's, it's going to make a huge difference uh, because then you at least have a target right you at least found something or you have something And it's uh, it's an important marker to check. So I hope this helps you guys out Hey, Christy Yeah, yeah, exactly. Christy says hey my doctor uh, Refuses to do reverse T3 so frustrating exactly because you because you know from a medical perspective They can't justify it. They say that it's it's um not medically necessary and it goes against the insurance based guidelines so uh, and it's and it's true i mean it's not like they're trying you know and in you know it's not like they're trying to um you know withhold valuable information from you a lot of them quite frankly most of them don't know its clinical relevance like why would i order that like what's the what's the relevance of that you know what let me show you something how about how about i show you my screen if this hopefully it doesn't do some kind of weird flicker thing um you guys are so welcome um, what do you do if your numbers are off? Jenny, I just mentioned, um, typically, let me show you, uh, let me show you guys a diagram. Okay. I'm going to flip this and let's see if you can see my screen. Cause I was actually looking at this, um, just a second ago. Um, hold on one second. All right. I'm going to flip this. If hopefully it doesn't do this weird flicker, it might. Do you guys have any kind of weird flicker going on? Yes. No, maybe anyone. Can you guys see that? Okay. Looks good. I should have put this thing in landscape mode. <laughs> 
anyway, <laughs> that's an afterthought. So um, check this out real quick. I'll show you here. So thyroid makes T4, primarily T4. T4 gets converted into T3 and RT3 for reverse T3, okay? Um, it's They compete, both of these compete with uh, f with each other for um, attachment to the receptors on the cell. So this every cell in your body has receptors. They will kind of compete with one another, and uh, they compete for binding sites. So if you have too much reverse T3, your T3 can't attach, and you have low metabolism, even though everything else could be normal. Even though T3 might be normal, T4 could be normal, TSH could be normal. So factors that increase conversion of T4 to T3, okay, right here. Selenium and zinc increase T4 to T3. Okay, so you can't be deficient in selenium. You know, the, the recommendation is typically uh, 200 to 400 micrograms of selenium, at least 30 milligrams of zinc. I typically recommend like 50 or 60 uh, of zinc. And then you've got to look, well, what might cause T4 to go to reverse T3? Um, factors that increase conversion stress, trauma, low calorie diets, inflammation. Uh, inflammation is huge, so if you, that's why you want to look at like inflammatory markers and stuff, right? You, you've got to see like what's going on there. Um, toxins, infections, liver, kidney dysfunction, and certain medications. So those are a lot of the reasons that you'll see, and that was from, uh, that was actually from um, the Institute for Functional Medicine, so one of the classes I attended. Um, uh, I believe it was Dr. Um, Hannaway taught that, but it was uh, very good, very informative. Um, a lot of these things I was aware of, but that's a great slide that helps you guys to to see that. Yeah, I know, right? Um, only TSH. So that's what a lot of you guys are going to get. Reverse T3 is a big one, though, I'm telling you. Do you see all those things? So reverse T3, if you can have a clearer picture of your thyroid hormone physiology, TSH, you know, at a minimum, TSH, uh, free T4, free T3, and then reverse T3. I mean, at a minimum, I would get, and I would get total T3. I'd get total T3 as well because you have to compare. If you want to see, like, relatively speaking, do I have decent, what, like, compare, is my T3 to reverse T3, are those levels, are those levels okay, or do I have way too much reverse T3 to free, to, to, to total T3? You've got to look at that, and, and I mentioned this earlier, but you take your total T3 level, which is typically, let's say, ideal is... 130, right? 130 is going to be a total T3 level that's more ideal from my perspective. For most people, everyone's an individual, but from my perspective. And then you divide it by your by your reverse T3 level. So reverse T3 should be like 15 to 18. That number, so you divide total T3 by reverse T3, should be 6 or greater, okay? Uh, today I've been looking at people and everyone's at like 2, 3. It's going to create major problems with energy production. So anyway... Um, so confusing. Christy, watch this one again. Watch this one again. Um, I promise I think I got it all right. Um, you don't, don't, don't have to be super overwhelmed, right? If you can just get like a few markers, it'll give you a better idea of what's going on, right? Are you converting T4 to T3 is the first thing. And then do you have high reverse T3? I see this, guys. You know, where, you know who I see this most commonly in? I see high reverse T3 levels in people that are taking, um, you know, like a Levothyroxine, Synthroid, Lavoxyl, all the synthetic T4 medications, right? I see it more commonly in those people because those people tend to not be able to convert T4 to T3 very well. They're probably deficient in selenium and zinc. They may have some problems genetically with enzymes, but most commonly it's like a deficiency with selenium and zinc. And then um, you so they'll have higher reverse T3. Now, if they have infections, if they have toxins, if they have other things driving an inflammatory process on top of that, then then you're going to make more reverse T3 there too. So you have to take the whole thing into consideration. You say, all right, what's going on with the person? What do these levels look like? What are the factors that drive it? Let's address the simplest things first, like selenium and zinc, right? I mean, if you're, if you're trying to... Because, I mean, testing for... Testing for some of these things, like going you know all out on testing, you can spend thousands and thousands of dollars. And you know what? If you feel better and you have good quality of life, it's worth it. But some people just don't have that option. So I try to give you guys as much information as I possibly can to help yourself. I always try to do that um, with everyone that I work with, everyone I talk to. So um, I hope that makes sense. But if you guys didn't see, like I I'm talking about reverse T3, guys, um, you check it out. Go um, just watch this video again. I showed you guys a slide that summarizes a lot of really important facts pretty simply for thyroid hormone physiology. Um, can I move to Ohio? <laughs> Ohio, um, 
Amy, I, you guys, you guys, some of you probably don't know this. I work with people all over the world. Like we have clients in other countries. I do Skype, FaceTime, and phone, and we work with people all across the country, and we help them on a consulting uh, basis. I, you know, we can we can uh, look at labs and help you get labs and do all that stuff, and I can give you some guidance on what I see, and you know, we we do that. That's primarily what I do. So. You know, if you're interested in that stuff, you can check out our website. But I just want to share that with you guys before I left. But I got to go. It's like almost 6 here. I'm on the East Coast. Um, it's time to get home and uh, play with the kids and eat, eat dinner. But, um, guys, I'll check out your comments. Please post them down here. Tell me where you're from, too. Tell me where you guys are, are from. Just post in there uh, where you're from. I'd like to see where you guys are around the world. And if you need anything, please post them there. Don't hesitate to message our team somewhere on here and we'll try to help you guys out as much as possible. If you're interested in more information about anything, message just message us on Facebook and my team will get back to you probably tomorrow and um, give you some direction. But appreciate you guys so much. Hope you have a wonderful, wonderful night. I hope this helps you guys out too. Thanks.